Hello everybody and good day. This is Fred with Tech Talk and I'm coming at you today with a video on a bridge kit that can be used to connect two points on a property. This is very popular in our campgrounds and marinas where we may have a modem or a router provided by the internet service uh, provider in an office building, but we want to distribute uh, Wi-Fi um, to a fuel dock or a slip for the boats in a campground Maybe we want to employ a security camera at the access gate where campers enter the facility or a rec hall um, or maybe the pool building, okay? And when we employ these cameras, it's often not cost effective or even possible to run wire from the main building to the remote building, okay? So these bridge kits are perfect for that. We are gonna talk about a bridge kit now that you can get for about $100. It operates on 802.11ac, it's very fast. It's a P2P bridge kit that can penetrate up to three kilometers, okay? And if you do the math, that's 1.8 miles, okay? So it's a very far distance line of sight. Um, it operates on the five gigahertz platform. It's very similar. Uh, if you watch our channel, you're very familiar with the end station five ACs. Um, this bridge kit is very comparable to those. Um, they can give you 900 Mbps on the five gigahertz frequency. So it's a very useful tool. It's a great bridge kit. We're gonna cover it right now. Okay, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Before we do, you know the drill. There is a subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Please consider clicking that and subscribing to our channel. Uh, that way you'll be notified when we upload future content. Also like the video if it's useful to you and as always leave comments. A lot of these videos are based on subscriber questions and comments. So yes, if you haven't guessed, we are indeed talking about KUFI. Okay, this is a CPE 200 bridge kit. Okay, it operates on the 802.11ax platform. Um, they are point to point and point to multi-point bridges. These guys can see um, each other at a distance of up to 1.8 miles, okay, line of sight. By line of sight, we mean the white on each of the access point um, must be able to see each other, at least a portion of the white. These are not going to be able to go through thick forests or steel buildings or anything like that. This is for a outside environment uh, where you have line of sight. But if you do, they are phenomenal, okay? So let's go ahead and unbox this and show you the components on the inside. All right, so we have removed the items from the box. As you can see, there is a transmitting and receiving bridge. Um, these are your 24 volt PoE injectors and you have the two CAT6 pass cables, okay? We also have a power supply here. Um, these will need power. So the first thing you're going to do is remove the weatherproof cover um, from the access point. There is a tab on the bottom here. You just squeeze that and push these out, okay? Just like so. Once you do that, um, when you open this, you will see two ports. One will be labeled WAN, and one will be, will be labeled LAN. The WAN port, okay, needs to be plugged into the PE, PoE injector, okay? Oftentimes with bridges and access points, it will say PoE right on the access point. This does not. Uh, so it must go into the WAN. So what we do is we remove the CAT6 patch cable, okay? We're gonna plug that into the WAN port, like so, okay? It's gonna go through this weatherproof slot um, we're going to take our 24 volt PoE injector out that comes with the kit. Uh, and there are two ports. Um, they are labeled LAN and PoE. Okay. The one labeled PoE will plug into the cable connected to the access point. Just like so. Okay. And we will plug that in and fire it up. Okay. Uh, while that is happening, we will do the same thing with the second access point. Again, PoE port of the PoE plug 
plugs into the WAN port of the access point. Okay, you can see that right there. So we'll do that. And we'll plug this in. What will happen, okay, um, there is a switch on this access point right here um, that has an H on one side, which this is switched to, and C, okay, and that stands for host access point and client access point. The host or the H is what is going to be plugged into your internet source, whether that be a modem, router, NVR, um, that will be plugged into the H. And again, you will see right here, H165, okay? That means this is the host H access point uh, and the environmental scanning has put it on channel 165, okay? So they have automatic channels. Um, that actually is good for this environment. Okay, so this, when it boots up, should be what? It should say C165, because we want it on the same channel, 165, but this is the client. So when we look there, sure enough, what do we see? C165, okay? So right now, out of the box, these guys are pre-configured to communicate with each other. And again, they can go up to 1.8 miles line of sight, meaning they can see each other, and again, uh, we've done about half that distance. I guess we've done about a three quarters of a mile with these guys line of sight and, and you get 450 Mbps. Okay. I know they advertise 900. Uh, I've never seen it. And, and that's not uncommon with bridges. Okay. As you go a great distance, um, you lose some of your throughput and that's to be expected. Okay. These are five gigahertz. They're not going to go through forests. Um, they're not going to penetrate steel walls. They're designed to pretty much have line of sight. They can go through a little bit of foliage or shrubbery, um, but they're not going to work well through anything thick, okay? All right, now that these are set up, what I'd like to do is actually log into one of these um, so you can see the control interface. All right, we have plugged our computer directly into the LAN port of our host bridge. Again, the host bridge is plugged into uh, your internet service okay if, if you're trying to continue your internet service and uh, pass it on to a router with the bridge the host the H uh, access point would be plugged into that modem or router um, and the C the client access point um, that LAN port would be plugged into the camera or access point uh, in the field on the remote building Okay, so we're going to do a speed test to see uh, what we are getting. We are at the office, and unfortunately, we only get 100 Mbps here. Um, but we should be seeing a majority of that. So let's do a speed test uh, and see what we're seeing. Okay, so yeah, we're getting a little over 90 Mbps. Um, again, the access point is, it's got a theoretical speed of 900 Mbps. Unless you have a gig of bandwidth, um, you're, you're not going to distribute that. Um, so this is, what we have is 120, uh, 100 download, um, 20 upload. Um, and we're doing pretty good with that. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is log in. I want to log into the access point um, to show you the interface, okay? And, and in order to do that, you can see on the screen right now, these access points come shipped from the manufacturer with the host access point having a static IP address of 192.168.188.1.1. And the client access point, its default access, its default, uh, I'm sorry, IP address is 192 period 168 period 188 period 100. Okay. So in order to log into those, they're not in DHCP, uh, they're static IP. So in order to uh, log into those, you are going to have to switch your computer's gateway um, to match the access points. 
and we've covered how to do this on a couple different videos but you hit the Windows button and the letter X on your keyboard okay that will bring up a prompt um, which you can see on your screen now that says network connections okay we're gonna click onto that this computer has been upgraded uh, to Windows 11 so this is how you switch your Ethernet adapters gateway uh, using Windows 11 it's very similar with Windows 10 you're just gonna go into Ethernet here okay and IP assignment right now you will see it is DHCP which is automatic configuration we're just gonna hit edit here and switch that to manual okay and we're gonna turn on IPv4 and for the IP address we are going to type 192.168.188.200 okay with a subnet 255 255 255 zero. and this is going to get us on the same gateway it's giving the computer we're using an IP address on the same gateway as those client bridges as the access points so we're going to be able to log into them now okay so I'll hit save and again we said the host is 192.168.188.253 okay um, here it is okay the default login which I'll show you how to change is admin okay and we do want to change that um, this is a very cool interface um, it's very simple to use okay you can go to wizard and you can see that our uh, our host access point is actually in AP mode as it should be um, you can click on the Wi-Fi tab here okay uh, it has the ability the the bridge that is on the host side uh, to give off a Wi-Fi broadcast SSID um, so you could change this and actually connect to this bridge um, for Wi-Fi usage uh, keep in mind if you do that you are taking bandwidth away from the client end uh, where your camera or access point is but if you wanted to you could change this to you know house Wi-Fi or whatever you want it to be um, and you could also change the password right here its default is eight sixes um, you could change that and customize that um, however you want you know you can also go into network um, it is set up again with a static IP if you want to change these bridges and put them in DHCP instead of static IP we could put get IP from gateway and when we click that and hit apply when the access point reboots it's going to allow your modem or router um, to issue it a favorable IP address on your network okay um, and the last thing you may want to look at um, is under Wi-Fi and the advanced tab okay you will see these are shipped from China so you would want to change the country region on these to the United States and you would also want to change the 5G mode from 802.11 AN to 802.11 AC okay AC is a later technology uh, it's faster okay so we want to get as much throughput through these guys as possible and that's why we're picking 80211 AC okay of course TX power is on max and those are pretty much the changes you can make from the interface okay uh, we did talk I'm sorry about the password uh, if you go under manage you have the ability to reboot your access point you can also give it a reboot time so every day if you wanted to reboot uh, you know a 2300 um, you can have it do that this is not a bad idea to do uh, because it ke keeps everything fresh particularly if it's in DHCP it's going to boot up and and reboot and make sure the modem or the router is giving it a good IP address and that it has a good connection um, to distribute to that client out in the field um, so you can certainly um, do the automatic reboot um, and modify password right here okay again the old password is admin we could type in admin and we could give it a new password okay simple as that again these are very cost-effective access points um, you can get this bridge kit for under a hundred dollars 
Um, and from my experience, it can hang in there uh, with our favorite bridge kit, which is obviously the Station 5 ACs. Uh, but with the chipset shortage and with availability the way that it is right now, um, this is a great alternative. These are readily available on Amazon. Uh, there is a link in the description of this video um, to, to order this product. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Again, please subscribe to our channel if you have not yet done so. There is a subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Also, like the video if this com content has been useful. And as always, leave comments. A lot of these videos are based on subscriber questions and comments. Until next time, we'll see you in the field.